Hello and welcome to the Body Surf Podcast with your budgie boys. Just Tim here this week with a very special guest who I'll introduce very shortly. Uh, you're actually the third body boarder we've had. The third? The third body boarder we've had on the podcast, so please do not switch off. I know a lot of people are not fond of body boarders. There's a bit of a hierarchy, I guess, in the ocean. There is. There's uh, the animal kingdom. <laughs> yeah. And then there's body surfers, <laughs> and then there's body boarders, and then there's stand-up surfers. Correct. So, you're in the middle there. I am. We're down below. That's right. But uh, you, 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 yeah, we'll, we'll get into what's going on with you, but a bit of housekeeping we've got to take care of soon. Oe is in Japan at the moment, so unfortunately, he will not be able to join us for our last episode of the Body Surf Podcast for the year. This is it. This is the last one. We're going to wrap things up for the year. It's been a great year. We've done a lot, and we'll reminisce a little bit about what's been going on for us here at the Body Surf Podcast very soon, because it has been pretty wild. It has been pretty crazy, and we have achieved a little bit this year so it's been very exciting but also it is currently the 17th of december 2022 we're recording this on a saturday morning it's pretty overcasty um there's some pretty big surf conditions out there we've been told to stay out of the water it's quite dangerous so instead we're recording a nice little podcast here in the new studio in the new house i've moved out north we're coming to you live from lane cove which is very exciting i can't wait to sort of learn a bit more about the area and maybe explore a bit of the northern beaches because uh a few guests on the podcast swim out this way there's manly there's is it freshwater yeah, there's freshy. um avalon up a bit further so yep. I'm, I'm very excited to get out and amongst it and hopefully you'll have some great insights and you'll be able to maybe Some. show me the ropes. <laughs> um, but I'll also be driving back to Cronulla every now and again. Um, f- f- what would you call him? I guess he's um, a fan favourite of the Body Surf podcast, Matthew Bond, a budgie boy. He lives out this way as well and he commutes to Cronulla every Saturday. So it's very achievable. But yeah, we're a week out from Christmas. We're like, you know, a couple of weeks away from the new year, really, and uh, we're wrapping things up here. So we'll reminisce about what we've done here on the Body Surf Podcast in 2022 on today's episode, and we'll talk a bit about what we're going to do next year, which is very exciting as well. So without further ado, I do want to introduce the guest of the last Body Surf Podcast for 2022, Lockie McIntosh. Thank you, bro. Thanks. It's good you to be doing? here, man. I'm doing well. I'm now, doing well. If, if you don't mind, I'll give the viewers a, a quick bio. For sure. Um, because not many people will be familiar with you. You are a, you're a North Shore local legend. Confirmed. <laughs> you're a body boarder. Yes. But I, you, I was. You Honestly, was. I yeah, yeah, you yeah. were. I, Sorry. Yeah. I don't body board anymore. But growing up, I was a grommet. I was a grommet on the northern beaches. Yeah. Uh, my mum was renting a stupidly expensive place in uh, Palm Beach. Oh, nice. And we yeah. used to body bur- bodyboard all around. Um, mostly Newport, a um, bit of Mona, um, Long Reef when it was, um, when it was good. Uh, and there was also Cross Waves, which was like, um, it was like South Newport meeting what, I think North Bungan. Why was it Cross Waves? Is that what it was? Um, it was literally like, uh, it, it, it's kind of like a reef and it was just, I think when there was a Southwest, no, a South East Swell or whatever it was. Southwest, I don't know. Um, there was there happened to be just a perfect wave, but it was super shallow, and it was right on cro- right on top of a reef. Yeah, yeah. So if you if you bailed bad, it wasn't good. Yeah. But it, it was pumping, man. It was actually usually this time of year that mm. there was a good wave there, which is interesting because a lot of the the places I surf are not great in summer. So you know, December, January, February, summer here in Australia. Yeah, the surf isn't great. Which is okay because the beaches are normally crowded anyways and you totally. probably don't want some big swell coming through. So we normally surf in winter, we get the steamers on and we get some bigger slabbier waves around that time of year. But it's interesting that you're saying there's some big swell or some good swell, consistent swell out here this time of year. So it'll be great to try and get in on that very soon. But we should also let the, the listeners know how we have come to know each other. We met in 2008. We did, A while ago, uh, we were studying film, television and radio. Yep. A certificate for in screen. Confirmed. At North Sydney Institute. Yeah. TAFE. Yeah. Is that what it was called? 
St. Leonard's TAFE. It's good you put in TAFE. It sounded like a uh, mental asylum <laughs> until then. <laughs> the Northern Institute. Yeah. I was awarded most likely to succeed at my mental institution. <laughs> <laughs> Blind colour. <laughs> and uh, so we, we went to TAFE, which we is did. sort of uh, for our international listeners, like a, a technical college. Yeah. You learn more practical stuff, normally trades. We, we studied television. We did. And we learnt uh, the ropes and, and learnt our craft there. A very fun little... It was very hard at the time. I feel like TAFE's become a lot easier. People are doing qualifications in like six months. Is that right? We did a year and we were there four days a week, yeah. all day, every day. Yeah, man. And, and big old days, especially on the days we would do practical productions, we were building yep. sets, we were filming sure. short films, we were doing live broadcasts. But um, it led us to not only have a, a great group of friends, but also led us to getting some pretty cool jobs and working Definitely. in the industry here in Australia. So you, you've you been working in television for a long time. I have so, um, yeah. Which is probably one of the reasons why you've given up the bodyboard. Yeah, I would be up there. Also, I'm like, I no longer live on the beaches. Mm. Um, yeah, it's I don't know. It's just one of those things, honestly. I kind of just grew out of it. But just on TAFE as well, that was directly uh, after a um, digital TV production upgrade for the TAFE. So we, we literally swooped in at the right time there. Um, they mm. just upgraded all the studios and all the equipment. $6 million refurb. Yeah, that's right. It's a lot of cash. Now it's old school. Yeah, I wonder how they go because the cameras were not HD. No. But they were they were 169. 169 yeah, just yeah. came in. Yeah, really. Yeah. We were yeah. we were recording before that. A lot of TV was broadcast on a square 4x3 yeah. TV. 2006 was um 169. So widescreen came in, but they weren't HD, mm-hmm. but pretty good quality. Yeah, not bad. Still broadcast SDI baseband. I mean still quality, but yeah, not And the audio facilities were great. For sure. I remember them being really good. Also, just the the studio spaces itself, like lovely smooth floors, big old curtains. Definitely. We used to build a lot of sets together. Yeah. Um, I stuck around for the second year. You didn't. I bailed. You bailed. Yeah. So, you you went on and did a diploma. Yeah. I dropped out. I learned way much. uh, Yeah. I learned way much more on the job than I did doing that second year. I may as well have started just in the industry, I think. Which I'm sure is like with most jobs, right? Well, that's what I kind of did. I guess I had a, a year head start on you guys yes that stayed in there which yeah really was just a year of learning for sure on the job rather yeah. than staying exactly back. man 100 yeah. percent. i remember at the end of that year as well I, we were joking around that we'd never see each other <laughs> that we'd never be friends post tape yeah and yet here we are all these years later we still we still adore each other well, I, it took us a while to sort of get a bit of a click happening. I think at TAFE, we're all very awkward. We're all oh, just... who is it? Yeah, we were just trying to get through what we had to do. Yeah. Um, but then I think we discovered that we all kind of liked the same sort of stuff. Definitely. We obviously had, had a connection because we all love television. Yeah. But then we found out, oh, we all love a beer. We all love a punt. <laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> we all love a carry-on. We all love, yeah. you know, sport. Um, what mm-hmm. else? And then you, you, you like bodyboarding and... The only time I've surfed with you was was many years later. So, I think I've always tried to drag you in and you've always pushed back a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. It's weird. I, 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 I see it as a past chapter in my life, not necessarily something that I want to... It's not that I'm... I mean, I, now I've started a family as well, so I've got a bub, but um, I'm more of, you know, I'm more into video games, as you know. So, when I do have spare yeah. time, I like to play video games. Is there a Mike Stewart bodyboarder pro video <laughs> game? <laughs> no, I don't think there is. There was, there, there uh, was a bodyboard yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, back in the Dizzy, man, there definitely was. I remember um, vividly playing um, Transworld Surf. Right. On Xbox, on the original Xbox. I yep. love that, but that was all surfboarding. Yes, yes, um, yes. You know how it is. So, Kelly Slater has uh, Activision game on PS2. Yep. So, that was like sort of that's right. the, the Tony Hawk style of game. Um, and that's really fun to play. Is it Sonny Garcia? Oh, I, don't I think know. Sonny Garcia had a game on PS1, oh. and that was a stand up surf a game. But there was a body boarding game. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. There, there was definitely a was. I'm game. not sure, who and I think that was on PS One. Okay, cool. So we should oh, try wow. and track down a copy of that. But yeah, gaming is a weird thing for me because you guys um, sort of upgraded and and got all the new gear. Mm. I'm still rocking this. Behind us is my games room. And I'm rocking a Nintendo 64, yep. a Nintendo Wii, and a PS Two. Yeah, and I still love it. Yeah. I love playing those games. Old school, man. It's nostalgic. Yeah, well, I just never grew out of it and I never learnt how to do the new stuff. I remember one of my favourite games was Rugby Union, I think, 98. Mm. 
Or no, 2001. 2001. And then they brought out a new one in 2005. Yep. On the PS2. And I just couldn't adapt to the controllers. Really? I was so used to the old 2001 version, but I can play it blind. I don't yeah. like. I've played it so much. Interesting. That I, but I, but I couldn't adapt and I couldn't upgrade. So I was sort of just stuck in the old school. Um, you play a bit of golf. It looks like you're about to go and have a it hit. Do, actually, it does. It does look like I like to be coordinated. You know, <laughs> the blue but yeah, socks I'd and fit the in blue on a golf polo. course. That's for sure. I played the other day. Actually, my lips are chapters. All get out, yeah. but um, yeah, man. Uh, um, lo- love, love games, love golf. Yeah, I still see golf is another thing. It takes way too much time. You can't pop out for golf. Yeah, you know, it's it, a four-hour day. See, some people pop in and out for a surf. Uh, we've we've got a few dads in the budgie boys, and they'll go. Oh, I've, I'm on dad duties. I got to just have a quick hour and then go yeah. out golf. You're strapped in for five hours. Yes, yeah, sir. But what I've been doing because uh, Finn Padman, who's been on the podcast, a little grom boy from North Cronulla, he and I do comedy together and we've started playing golf together awesome but again it's very time consuming and now we live uh, pretty far away so Even I've, harder. I've been playing Wii Golf oh yeah and nice it's quite for it. it's quite good cool. it's quite fun I think it actually helps with the game it helps you read greens yeah when you're putting yeah honestly so I've been playing a lot of Wii Golf which has been fun I'm not a big gamer I probably only do like a half hour a week Oh, okay, copy that. Yeah, so you're probably putting a few more hours in. I'm doing the old burning candle at both ends. I'll stay up late to get in an hour. You know what I mean? Because I've got a five-month-old now, yeah. and um, it's it's pretty tricky. Like I was even saying to my wife this morning, because she we, we used to video game together. We still, in fact, um, last night we played some some Ghost Recon together um, after the baby had gone to bed. But uh, we still we used to like get up and play. But now it's just 100. percent It's baby time, right? So at the end of the day, we'll, we'll either squeeze in something, or she's so tired, I will. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to get uh, too sidetracked with gaming, but yeah, one, sorry. One last. <laughs> one, I could talk all day. I know this, there, there are gaming podcasts out there. I'm yeah. guessing. That yeah, quite no, no, popular. No, for sure. I've got a friend who uh, hosts a very popular YouTube gaming um, series. Really? I'll show you it. It's, Please. it's quite cool. Please. But yeah, I don't want this to become of a course. gaming Let's podcast. Let's talk um, bodyboarding. Although there's a lot of a lot of body surfers that are gamers and uh, we, we should trade your, your username so you can all link for up sure. and play uh, together. Yeah, my Do you play tag. Fortnite? No, I don't. Uh, okay. I don't. I think that's what they're on. They're okay, on that's cool. Fortnite. So, and uh, one of them, one of the budgie boys plays Fortnite, and he gets on and just goes absolutely mental at little kids, just like <gasps> yeah, yeah, griefs them. Yeah, like really yeah. gets into There's it. There's a lot so. of that online. Uh, but it's very easy to be toxic <laughs> online, you know, because of the anonymity. Yeah, I troll a lot of people yeah. in my spare time. I bet you do. No, I get trolled. <laughs> <laughs> you look like I, a real life. I troll. got bullied on the bus on the way here. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I one last gaming story. A, a few years ago, you were about to achieve a really high level on Xbox. Yeah, 100,000 game score. And that's on Xbox 360? Um, it's just on the Xbox platform. Xbox pla- platform. Yep. Xbox platform, okay. Yep. So, yeah, that was a big achievement for you and you mm-hmm. actually hosted a little party for us to come and view you make that achievement. I did, and you were there, and you were dressed uh, very suave in a tuxedo, white tux. Yeah, so we all dressed up as characters from games. Yes. So I'm sure there was a Mario and Luigi. I wonder if you... It, there's a video edit version of the podcast, yeah? Yeah. You should totally insert a picture of how you were dressed uh, right now, right? I try. You've got to. I know we you went. Can't say I know we went to not. film school, but like I'm, I'm, I'm very lazy with the Adobe Premiere edit. Oh, is that right? Do you know what? All I do is I get the the video, I get the audio, I sync it, and then yeah. I post it. Oh, that's good. all we do. No, but that's good because if it's too much work, then you'll be less inclined to you know do it. And to be honest, not many people watch us on the YouTube. Most people listen to the audio on the YouTube. That's <laughs> just like an old way of saying it. So yeah, we were all dressed up as characters. I think we you were. were dressed up as a Halo Master soldier. Chief. A Halo yeah. soldier? That's classic. Yeah, it's, Master Chief. It's I was. the guy from Fortnite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't That's know. hilarious. A soldier. Yeah. So was someone Luigi? I'm was sure great. there was there a was, Princess yeah, there was Peach. A Captain America was there. Um, there was the guy from Breaking Bad. Captain really. America! <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, our friend Paul dressed up as Captain yeah. America, but he was about six hours late because he was <laughs> sewing the costume. Oh, I was going to say he was saving the world with the rest of the Avengers. <laughs> yeah, there was there was some good characters, man. And, and, and I unlocked my 100,000th gamer score in front of the whole party um, playing Bioshock Remaster. You did it pretty quickly. Like, you had yeah, it all yeah, set up. I had it all set up. I had a save. Well, the thing is, it's the first achievement in the game. So you just need to get up and electroshot some water and you get five games score or whatever it was. 
yeah. and uh, and it ticked over to a hundred thousand, and we all um, kept drinking into the night. It was a great it was a great day, man. Fond memory. I'm actually at about one hundred sixty seven thousand now. Oh, wow! And you did something that I thought was very logical, very rational. Uh, you knew the TAFE boys were coming over. You knew your brothers were coming over. So you said, I'm, I'm, I'll I'm, put on a spread and I'll put on some drinks, but I'm only putting on mid strengths. 100%. And That's it was a good call because we, we were drinking since midday. Yes, so confirm. That's how we roll. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was a good idea. I was dressed obviously as James Bond yeah. from the Golden Eye. Classic. Nintendo 64 game, which is one of my favorite games. I haven't mm-hmm. played it a lot lately, but it is a great game. And we afterwards, should, uh, we should play some afterwards. Slappers yeah. only, baby. Oh yeah, for Let's sure. Go. I um, but we also played Halo afterwards. Yeah, we did. And uh, I remember everyone's like, "All right, no one go in the banshees," and I'm just like, <laughs> "That was good fun, man. That was really good, good uh, memories." Yeah, so that's enough game chat. We normally yeah. do shitty movie chat here on the Body Surf oh, Podcast. Oh, I saw Avatar yesterday. Oh, well, 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 let's <laughs> let's get into that at the end. So let's get into some body surf chat. Let's talk. So. Obviously, uh, I've done everything you can do in the water. I started out as, um, I guess, a swimmer, you know, swimming at the swimming carnival. I remember being very young. The first event I ever went in was backstroke, probably my worst stroke. It's a tough stroke. I did it because I I thought I could keep my head out of the water. Hmm. You know, if I'm on my back, I've got my head out of the water, there's probably less chance of me drowning. Yeah. But... um. So, because <laughs> I wasn't a very competent swimmer. Logical. I'm, I'm, from, I'm from Western Sydney, so like it took me a while to sort of get um, comfortable in the water. And then, yeah, I, I got better at swimming carnivals. And then, obviously, I was living in Cronulla, so I got into bodyboarding mm-hmm. and then upgraded to body, uh, to stand up surfing. And I never really found my groove. I really enjoyed it. I mm-hmm. caught some really lovely waves and have some fond memories. But then, really came into my own when I discovered body surfing and, and it started off as just a little hobby, as just like a little goof, that thing you would do, you just go down the beach and jump on some waves. My music teacher in high school actually taught me how to catch waves just using a butterfly technique. Um, so yeah, we got into... to And also I was um, a very keen wakeboarder and yeah. wake skater and so I was always in the water. How did you sort of get in the water? Because I know you lived in England for a long time. I did, so yeah. So I'm guessing there's not much surf over there. No. No, what is there? There's Cornwall, I think, yeah. is a popular we, spot. Yeah. We've very, very chilly. Some people body surf it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I was it's I was always a strong swimmer, like growing up primary school, a lot of um, swimming events, etc. Freestyle, you know, breaststroke. I always loved the water. We did nippers growing up as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I did didn't do nippers, nippers no. Oh, okay, so we did... But that was like mandatory in the family. We'd go down to Monavelle and, and get stuck into some nippers on a Saturday morning. Uh, and and that was all through primary school. So I always felt confident in the water. And then, uh, yeah, I just got stuck. It was kind of my mates in high school. So I was over in England in 2002, 2003, and I came back at the beginning of 2004. And that's really when I got stuck into the bodyboarding because uh-huh. my mates were doing it. My mate owned a um, element of board and I got my eyes fixed on a BZ yeah. and I ended up getting a... Do you have that picture? Maybe you could... F- and you don't edit. But uh, yeah, the um, BZ T21, I think it was a 42 inch is what I... And it had a back tail. Is that um, the board you rocked up to for my... I think it was my 30th. We yeah. went for a body board. And, Correct. Um, yeah, you you rocked up at Maruba in an Uber. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You had the your board strapped to the roof racks. <laughs> yes, what on man. So that was a, your BZ. Yeah, my BZ T twenty one. Um, and it had an Xbox sticker on the bottom of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, somewhat embarrassing, but uh, no, I I used to love it. So back then, yeah, it was um, it was all northern beaches that we'd we'd surf. We went up to Forster one time. Oh yeah. And there was a really good wave. I can't remember the name of the beach. I couldn't tell you, but we had an Airbnb up there. Oh, Airbnb wasn't around. We were just renting a house but it was uh it was an awesome spot up there um but yeah mostly northern beaches man we were conformed to it was good that's awesome now what flippers well we normally ask people you know what's in your floppy bucket Uh, a floppy bucket is a big old bucket where you put all your body surf gear in yep uh, it could be your flippers, a hand plane, a towel, mm-hmm. um, any other sort of gear you like. Maybe you put little earplugs in, whatever gear you're using. We've, you've already established that you're a BZ guy. Yeah. What sort of fins were you into? I were rocking the Churchill. Ooh. I had some Churchill classics. I'm not sure what they were exactly called, but they were yellow and black. Yeah. You'd probably know. I know them. the ones. You could yeah. probably Google Churchill fins and the yellow and black ones would come up. And I'm not even sure what size they were. Did they come in like uh, numbered sizes or were they just like small, medium, large? Most flippers just come in the small, medium, 
medium large. Yeah. Some even do like um, extra small to small, small yeah. to medium, medium to large, large to extra large, extra yeah. large, XX. Like, well, I, I remember around the time all my mates, my wealthier mates had um, the hydros. Is that does that ring a bell? Hydro. Fins? That's what I use. Oh, okay, so, cool. Um, yeah, I, and they I have like yeah. I use the Tech Twos. Okay, which are a pretty well known fin. They're they're made from silicon, so cool. like like sometimes Churchills or other body boarding fins are really rubbery and they cut into your ankle. For sure. Where the the Hydro Tech Twos, I think, are very soft, very forgiving, very comfortable. Some people say they don't have as much power mm-hmm. as a as a like a bigger fin, like what you were using. Yeah, but. I always the thing we talk about on the podcast a lot is comfort over power. Okay, and you know we, you, you've probably heard of other fins um, that get used a lot more in body boarding or body surfing. Yep. Like uh, I didn't, uh, yeah, I, I didn't think the hydros were used that much in body boarding. So it's interesting that your mates use that, and they're not that expensive. So you're saying your oh, really? your rich mates use yeah, them? Yeah, you can I, pick up. A maybe pair it was of, just all the jazz back then. I, I just remember my Churchills were the uh, exception to the rule. Everyone was rocking those ones. Um, yeah, I, I would say the Churchill is a more conventional bodyboarding fin. Yeah, for than sure, the man. Hydros. I mean, I loved it. Could you, you know. get up drop knee on it? I yeah. So I I was never really great, but I I could barrel roll. I could barrel roll. I couldn't do a three sixty, but I could just drop knee. Um, yeah. So no, I re- I really enjoyed it, man. I love bodyboarding, and I still. I, I still would love to go um, and give it a crack for old time's sake. More more for nostalgic reasons yeah. than taking it up again. Yeah. You know? Well, and now that you've got the young one as well, it's, yeah. it's going to be fun getting her in the water. Yeah. And teaching her how to for swim sure. and getting her. Like, that's some of my fondest memories of my dad. Actually, some aren't that fond. I'm, I was quite scared the first few times going in the water. My dad would just put me on a board and throw me onto waves. Just leave you be. <laughs> but like big waves. And I was like just a little kid. I didn't have fins on. I had this little like, I think it was called the Hot Rod by Piping Hot. Um, just this foam bodyboard. And he would just throw me onto monster waves. Wow. And it was terrifying. But I guess that's how you got to get into it. Well, exactly. Sink or swim. Yeah, yeah. So we briefly mentioned that um, for my 30th, which was almost three years ago. Yeah, oh my goodness. Last last time, last pretty much time we had a big catch up before COVID. So we went bodyboarding and body surfing the morning of my birthday at Maroubra. We decided to go to Maroubra just to see how it was going. And there's a few options there and everyone was kind of able to meet there. Uh, the TAFE boys came. Well, Michael Knight and yourself came, mm-hmm. and then um, some of the, uh, the the fans of the show came. So Rob Robbie Meldrum was there, and then some of the Budgie Boys were there, and we just found this little shorey, um, really far away from the main beach. We were so far away that a wedding just broke out on the beach. That's right, and we were like in the way of their photos or something. Yeah, there was a bit of tension there, if I recall. Well, I think we got out just in time for them to sort of have the beach to themselves as the ceremony was starting. But also, Robbie Meldrum, um, you know, who's a, a big part of the Body Surf Podcast, he went and moved some things on the beach because he was worried they were going to be in the shot. Like there was a trailer sitting there, like a surf life club trailer. He moved that so it wouldn't be in the shot. And he was just saying, you know, all he was saying is if this was like my miso's wedding, she would not want that in the photo. So he was just trying to take care of the beach for these guys who were getting married on the beach. But we had a great little sesh that morning, a few shories coming through. Yeah, man. I saw you. I think I saw you get up drop knee on a few waves, but we were just getting dumped and having a lot of fun. You were wearing this singlet, like a green singlet. Yeah, I was. I didn't have my... Because back in the day, I, I used to rock a springy, a spring suit, a yeah. Ripco one. But I don't have a, you know, I don't have anything like that nowadays. And, and in fact, that one wouldn't even fit me. But actually, it might. Um, yeah, no. So, yeah, man, I think I was just rocking a singlet and it wasn't even a rashy. I think it was yeah. just a cotton singlet. I took it home for a while. I had it because actually? you left it somewhere and it was so like the, the arm straps were just string. Is that right? They stretch so much. Oh. So you don't like um, like a rasher? You'd never get a rashy? I would, man. But it's just it's just that I don't own one. I don't have one. I don't rock it. Because honestly, I, I, w- I bought a new rashy the other day. I got like a proper surf yep. rashy, pretty cool. cheap, like a long sleeve one. Uh-huh. And it's mainly just to protect myself from the sun yep. um, in summer. And that's key. And because I don't, obviously you can't, I normally wear a spring suit all year round sort yep. of thing, but Good it man. does heat up a bit. So For sure. a rash shirt's a better option. But I also just picked up something from Target, from Target. Mm. Piping hot, make rash shirts out of recycled bamboo. Is that right? So it's it's really nice quality. 
And, you know, it's like 20 bucks or something. Like, nice. they're making this stuff so cheap and it's just so handy to have it, whether you're a bodyboarder that needs a bit of protection. Because what is it? What's a bodyboard made out of? Like foam and fiberglass? Yeah, glass foam, and fiber. Well, you've just nailed it. I, I used think. to get so much irritation For sure. if I would ride shirtless. We, so used, to, we used to actually wax the You'd top wax the whole well. thing. You'd do like a, yeah. So a, a rash coat. shirt or a, a, some sort of wetsuit is mandatory, I think, when you're bodyboarding. For or sure. a t-shirt. As yep. you, I see a lot of surfers doing the t-shirts yeah. sometimes. Yeah. as well it's a, sort of a fashion statement yeah definitely but pick yourself up a rashy like next time you're at Tajay because these things are great and even just for going to the pool going to the beach just for a swim yeah 100% protect yourself from the sun um, but yeah that was a great little sesh for my 30th we had some good ways we, we got some good footage that day as well I think and then we went to Harry Man Brewery yeah sponsor of the Budgie Boys and uh, you tried a few nice little bevos that was awesome what was your favourite you, you're a dark man aren't you I am I you prefer know. a darker ale uh, I think it's an English I'm thing. A bit of a fiend. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Actually, you know what? I do know what it is. My dad my dad was into stouts. And when I was growing up, like much like you were getting tossed in the waves, he was he was pouring me a dark beer when right. I was like 14. <laughs> and I loved it, man. I was yeah. I, I've, So I've always been like pretty inclined to a darker ale. It's funny. Owie and I are sort of uh, pub babies. Mm. We were raised at pubs. So Owie's dad was a pretty big drinker and uh, would take him to the leagues club. And... That's why I was so good at like pool and darts. Yeah. Because if you you know if you're a baby or a kid that's grown up at a, a pub, you're either going to be like really good at totally. pool and darts or become an alcoholic. And <laughs> Owie was both. <laughs> um, Owie's good. pretty good on the drink lately. I went to a wedding with him. Like I'm completely off it, but he, yeah, he was pretty us. tame the other night because there was an open bar and he went all right. So yeah, uh, it's funny. Uh, when you see someone who's really good at pool and darts, you go, this person's either had a rumpus room <laughs> or their dad was an alcoholic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, like we were both... Both raised, yeah, like you know, going to going to pubs and and, and leagues clubs mainly. Yeah, would go to the leagues club and there were no kids clubs back then, so you would just play pool. Yeah, um, but yeah, a dark beer is a very English thing. Um, it is, and hairy men do a pretty nice one. Yeah, that was a good day, man. I enjoyed that. And then we went to my local back in Sutherland, uh, Boyles, and you rented a room. We did. This yeah, is the 100%. funniest story to me because I just wanted to check it out and it was quite expensive to rent a room. It there. was. And it was a pretty it was. shitty room. It, it was, but it fundamentally did the job. You know, it had a bed, it had a shower. Yeah, one of your floorboards was made out of like a, a sign from <laughs> yeah. like a, a advertising for beer. That's it's right. Like, it was like one, just one yeah, of the floorboards, yeah, half four, the ad. Four dollars for a bag of ice <laughs> <laughs> was, a, was the floorboard. And then Michael's room, one of yeah. the... Oh. The TAFE boys. Yep. His shower was like, it was like a, what would you call it? Like a time time machine. Yeah, it looked like a time machine in the corner of the room as opposed to a shower. It looked like what Austin Powers was frozen in. Yes. So and like it wasn't this, in its own bathroom. Yeah. It was in the bedroom. But like in the middle of the room. So if you were sharing that room with someone, they would just see you having a shower in the 100%. middle of the room. So a very interesting setup. But I do appreciate you guys making that effort because it was a good night and we, we, we hung there uh, to the wee hours of the morning just carrying on. That was awesome. And yeah, I believe, was it Paul that got stuck outside? Someone got Oh, yeah, you guys will get locked. Because it's a weird setup when you stay setup. at a pub that's a hotel. Like, there's no staff there after a certain hour. It's so, you've got to kind of look after yourself. It's, I'm sure if there's an emergency, you can call a number, but it's. I, I think they close at two or three, mm. and then mm. you're there by yeah. yourself. <laughs> yeah. Good on you. Um, yeah, no, that was really fun. Now, I just wanted to mention the, the TAFE boys is a really good group of guys. There's yourself, there's me, there's Damon, who I think was really instrumental in bringing us all together. I agree. Uh, especially because I dropped out of TAFE early and then he sort of brought us all back. For sure. Then there's Michael Knight, who I think is the funniest human in the world. He is. I want him to do stand-up so badly. He's done a few roast things with me and... Um, he might be a good get on the Man, podcast. He's yeah. such a funny oh, guy. Yeah, sure. And then there's Paul, who uh, is a very quirky character, Captain America, who comes to things either really late or really early. I don't know what his vibe is anymore. <laughs> so he always keeps us on our toes. But we're a good group of, of mates. And we are. We're called the Sauna Boys. We are, yeah. <laughs> so I've got the Budgie Boys and then I've got the Sauna Boys. Yep. But um, the Sauna Boys, I think, are leading the charge in merch because we're going to get some stuff made up. We soon. are, man. But why are we called the Sauna Boys again? <laughs> so I believe we, we saunaed once. 
together or did we end up doing it twice? It was at Damon's apartments out west and we went for a sauna together and we kind of couldn't stop laughing and joking about it. And it was just five dudes having a sauna, you know? Yeah, but do we even like saunas? Mm. Well, I, I do, I, I but I don't do it often. <laughs> like I would love to get into saunering. Mm. It's something that I... Because I know there are some incredible health benefits. I mean, Google it. It's, it's, uh, it's tremendous for your health. But we only did it once and we've since... Did, did we do it twice? I think we... Because I feel like Damon's had a few different apartments that yeah. <laughs> they've had, in, had saunas included. This apartment has a sauna. Does it actually? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Um, I, I, I'm not a big fan of them. I can't handle them. I can only do about 10 minutes and I'm done. Yeah, okay. So, we, we've arranged to do a big Super Bowl party here in February. Bro. So, after the Super Bowl, because the Super Bowl airs very early here. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll go have a spa, sauna and pool. Mate, let's do it. Barbecue, all that sort of fun stuff. I can't so that, wait. Yeah, we'll have, that will be our third time in a sauna, I think. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but we are the sauna boys. And we once, once we went um, to a pub, and someone goes, hey, we're about to start trivia. Do you want to come and join the the game of trivia? Because we had about four or five people there and we had a good little team. And we're like, yeah, we'll do it. And again, Michael Knight is a massive film buff and yeah. got like every film question right. Nailed it. It was like, who was the second grip on when Harry met Sally? And Mike was like, yeah, I know yeah. this one. So we did okay in in the sauna. Uh, <laughs> sorry, in the in the quiz, the team name was Sauna Boys for sure. So we're playing trivia. Our team name's the Sauna Boy, and the triv- ma- trivia master goes, "All right, here's the last question for the night. In which country has the most per capita saunas?" <laughs> And she's like, Sauna Boys, you better get this. <laughs> yeah. And I think I think we got it wrong. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did. What is it? Is it Sweden? Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, it's Sweden. some Scandinavian sort of Definitely thing. Definitely a yeah. Scando, yeah. So, yeah, it was a, it was a very fun night. Uh, I don't know if you were there. Were you there for that? I was there, you were there? 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I, I won the free free um, jug of beer for the question, yes. which in which American state is prostitution legal? Is it Nevada? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I remember everyone was giving me grief because, oh yeah, <laughs> oh, he knew. He's going. What a he's been to Nevada a few times. Yeah. Have you been to America much, man? I've been. Uh, I've been on one trip to America. Well, I don't know. Do you include Hawaii? Yeah. If, if you yeah, okay, so then two yeah. trips. I went um, once in 2013 and once in 2015. 2015 was to New York and LA, and it was awesome because I love baseball. Yeah. And was able to go to a couple of series of baseball. Uh, one in Yankee Stadium with the Red Sox. Um, actually, we went to City Field for the Mets as well. The Nationals were playing the Mets there. And then we were able to go to Dodger Stadium yeah. where the Nationals were a who week you, later. Who do you, you support the Dodgers, yeah? No, I actually I support the Arizona Diamondbacks, okay. <laughs> which are uh, one of the lower-level teams yeah, yeah, yeah. as far as budget. I was telling you, a mate of mine, an old mate I haven't spoken to him for years, but he... he um he got um, what is it called? He got drafted, drafted to play for the Diamondbacks. Awesome! Yeah, what was he a pitcher or a pitcher? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, I remember cool. once we went to a driving range and we were just playing with him, and then he stopped hitting them and just started pitching golf balls and was throwing them further oh than we were hitting them with drivers. Oh. My word. But yeah, he was uh, very good. I think he got, he got like a million bucks in a college deal as well. That's yeah. awesome. So yeah, he was very... And he's over there now? I don't think he's retired. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he was a bit younger than me, so I'm guessing he's probably 30 now. Yeah, so okay. he's probably retired. All right, yeah. yeah, no kidding. So yeah, it, it's cool when, when people like that make it big. It Have very, you been to the States? Yeah, a bit. Um, I, I went to Hawaii when I was very young. Yeah. And when I was in Hawaii, I was probably about four or five. Uh-huh. Um, there's a few pictures of me trying to catch some waves, but um, we got a warning while we were there saying, hey, uh, everyone needs to sort of evacuate the beach, go back to their apartments, get as high as you can because there's a tsunami coming. And we had never heard the word tsunami. You know, this was 1994. Oh, my goodness. Since then, we've heard the word tsunami probably too many times because um, there's been some horrible stuff, especially over in Indonesia. But yeah, we, we were really worried. And my mum goes, oh, Tim will be all right. We'll just put his floaties on. <laughs> he'll just get he'll just get drifted away in the fine. in the floods. Yeah, forget about all the materials, and <laughs> shit floating around. So this tsunami never came, which was very lucky. But um, that was sort of terrifying to to have this warning. You know, sirens and alarms were sure. going off and stuff. I thought when you said get as high as you can, being Hawaii, they'd just like smoke a bunch of weed. Exactly. Yeah, we've had a few Hawaiians on the podcast uh, that love getting high. Um, <laughs> 
you know, they say it's good for their lungs. They're all yeah. swimmers. They're all good swimmers. They say that it helps their lungs. Good for inflammation. Yeah. So, yeah, I've done America a bit. Uh, I went when I was 21. I did the Vegas, New York, LA. I'm a big fan of late night television. So, we did a few. Yeah. We went We went to the Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson. And we went to Letterman in New York. And, uh, yeah, we got. it was really cool. We got to see all that stuff before most of those people retired. Yeah. And that... That sort of late night legacy, I think, has been tarnished. What's what's now? There's the British guy does one. Yeah, so James Corden took over for Craig Ferguson. Is he good? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> and then Stephen Colbert took over for Letterman. Okay. Not good. Mm. Yeah, it's, there's no one doing a great job. Yeah. What a shame. I'm, I'm, James Corden's retiring soon, and I'm I'm really hoping they put someone. There's a, there's a guy from the Daily Show. I think his name's Roy. Uh, I think he's up for it, and he's he's a stand up, so I think he'll do a better job. They, you know, James Corden's an actor; he's a musical guy. Like, I think you've got to put stand up in that job. Yeah, agreed. And even Colbert, you know, he's an improviser; he's a he's a satirical kind of guy. But now he's become. I think Stephen Colbert. I don't know if you've watched it. You used to watch Letterman and stuff, yeah. No, I didn't. Uh, man. I'm see, sorry. the good thing about Letterman is he he the audience and him were in on the joke, and he would cool. kind of just roast the, the 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 guest. Yeah. Where Colbert has become this like brown nose and mm. like sucking up to the guest, oh. and it's just not. It's not nice to watch. It's like, what do you want? Do you want to get invited to Ricky Gervais's house? Like, yeah. why, why are you being so nice? Good call. Letterman just didn't care. Yeah. And I think that's why it was really fun to watch. But yeah, it was good to see all that stuff before it finished up. We're getting into shitty movie chat, I feel. Oh, man. We're like leaning into it. You want to it. talk about shitty movies? Let's let's get into Avatar now. Oh, and then we'll finish up the show with a, a few announcements about the Body Surf podcast. So, Avatar. I saw the first Avatar. What? 20 years ago? 2009. Okay. 2009 it came out and this is the direct sequel and we're, what are we, 13 years later and this is the way of the water. So as the name might suggest, they head east. Do you know what's so funny? Um, you know the film Finding Nemo? I do. Um, apparently the animators had uh, a lot of issues animating the water because it looked too realistic. Wow. So they had to make it, the water look more cartoonish. Is that right? Yeah. Bloody interesting, man. So I'm guessing Jimmy Cameron's worked out a way how to make it look oh, super realistic. I think that is one thing that you cannot argue with. The presentation of the film is incredible. It's 10 out of 10. As far as graphics, fidelity, I mean, nothing beats it. Nothing beats it. It's so incredible. It looks real. And it's, it kind of plays on your mind because it looks real, like particularly the way that, you know, water interacts with their skin and, mm. and makes any of their hair glisten. And it's incredible, man, the particle effects and everything. But story and character development and character motive and narrative in general, that's another question. Well, that was the issue with the first one. I think the first one for its time looked very impressive and everyone. Sure. And 3D cinema experiences were... And mocap. Were really big. Yeah. Uh, I remember for for a while, like I would only go and see 3D films. Yep. And like they weren't great, but it's no. just that was the trend. For sure. So the story of the first one isn't great. And it, it kind of feels like it's ripping off like Pocahontas or yes. something like that. Like yeah, there's a few on. films that have a similar sort of narrative narrative this one looks even worse than the first one in terms of story but yeah will the graphics get it over the line will the the cinematography get it over the line you know it costs a couple of mil yeah to make this film it doesn't look like it's going to break even i think it'll no i think it'll still make a billion or more well We'll see, it, but it's yeah, it's um what about it's a good question what but, about these smurf characters do they do they look real they i mean yeah, they look like the Na'vi. So, I mean, do they look real? Yeah, they look real in the world that they exist in, for sure. But, again, I think you need to be... Because the graphics, in my opinion, aren't enough to get it over the line. Yeah. It's kind of... It's not going to surprise you in any way, shape, or form. And none of the none of the, the changes, the arcs in the story are going to surprise you. You're going to... It's same old, same old, <laughs> cliche, blockbuster, not making sense. It, it's a bit... Yeah, it's not for me. Mm. But I loved going and seeing it because I love going to the movies and I haven't been... Well, it's the second time since we've had our bub, right? So, What other movie did you see? I um, saw The Menu about a month ago. Oh, yeah, I've got to see that. Don't tell me anything about it. I've okay. got to watch that. I won't. Yeah, that looks really cool. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. Jimmy Cameron, he just... You know, Terminator 2 was good. Oh, yeah, you can't argue with that. I think... What else has he done that's been okay? Um, oh, Titanic? You can't argue with Titanic. You uh, can. Well... It's good. Yeah. It's long, yeah. but it's 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 still good. It's still very good. 
Um, I would have watched that. Yeah, I think we watched that last year uh, again. And it, it holds up. I mean, it's kind of fun to poke fun at, you know. But it's, yeah, it's still solid. Mm. It's still solid. Um, what else has Jimmy Cam done, bro? Remember when um, he was up for like Best Picture at the Oscars and his wife, his ex-wife won? I don't remember this. So no. His ex-wife made like a war film. Okay. And like pretty low budget compared to what Jimmy does. Yeah. And she beat him. Really? <laughs> yeah. So that was quite interesting. Oh, hilarious. Yeah. I, I've, I've watched a few interviews with him on like Howard Stern and stuff and he, he backs himself. He does? He he never studied filmmaking traditionally. I think he audited a few classes. Oh, like, okay. So he would just get the the curricular and just read it and, and he learned how to... He was a truck driver. So... He he learned how to make films in his spare time, and Is that then he, right? and then he I think he you know even with Titanic you know he didn't take a salary, he just he got like you know a bit of wow. bit of the the grossings and oh, a bit of merchandising and all the rights and stuff. Yeah, but like I think it just led it, it got his name out there, and then he was able to make the films he wanted to do for sure after like having success with Terminator and Titanic and things like that. And and I know that he loves different forms of storytelling, like. Entirely 3D. That's that's yeah. what he loves doing. It's just that I think that the storytelling itself is not very good. At least certainly not with the latest Avatar. Well, he loves uh, deep sea exploring. Yeah, that's right. And he's done a bit of like South Park even t- even for... Titanic was a bit of that really. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, yeah, it was, it, he's an interesting dude. And uh, I don't know, like with directors, I feel like there's there's normally two or three kinds of directors. There's Directors that are like cinematographers that are behind the camera, they know how to make a scene look good, they know how to shoot stuff. And then there's directors that are very good at directing actors and getting the best out of the actors. And then there's some directors, screenwriters, who are kind of good at telling stories as well. Sure. Where I don't, I guess Jimmy is more of the visual guy. Definitely. So why doesn't he team up with someone who can write something half decent? Mm, that's a good idea. But is he just. He wants to do it all. He's a control freak. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. And when you get to that point as well, you have kind of like you know the in the same way that George Lucas butchered the 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 last three um, Star Wars films, not like the latest three, but the prequels. Yeah, yeah. He just had too many yes men around him. Too yeah. many people that are just like, huh, it sounds like a good idea, mate. Like, yes, yeah. I want to keep my job. Like Jar Jar Binks and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. what about this? And no one's going to tell him no because he's George Lucas. Do you know who really likes those films? Who? Uh, Ewan McGregor. Has he really? Well, well he's in him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's like the best thing from them, I think. I, he's up there. And I think they're making um, an Obi-Wan Kenobi sort of... They made one oh, on, on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I didn't see it, but it's, uh, it I, is out there. I know Ron Howard's involved in a lot of stuff. I think he directed Solo. Which I liked. I yeah, liked, Solo. Liked Solo was all right. Yeah, did he direct Solo? Yeah, cool. I think he's. Yeah, he he's, he directs some stuff that you're like, oh, I didn't know Ron Howard did that. Yeah, he does some really cool stuff. He's a good guy. He's a good director. Yeah, for sure. Does he write much as well? Just Ron direct? Howard. Yeah. Oh, I don't know, man. I think he just directs. Good guy. Happy days. Yeah. Happy days. All right. Well, let's get back on track because our listeners hate shit movie chat, but that was really good shit movie chat. Nice. I think um, James Cameron doesn't get much of. Um, I mentioned here on the Body Surf podcast, we normally talk about a guy called McG. Who's McG? So McG directed Charlie Angel, Charlie's Angels. Is that right? And then he directed Terminator Salvation. Oh. But he was also involved in the OC, did a lot of stuff with the OC. Is that right? But yeah, he's an McG. interesting... McG. McG, his name is just M, big M, small C, big G. Cool. I don't know what it is, but that, that's his name. Bizarre. But yeah, he was like one of those guys, sort of like, is it Spike... Spike Jones, who started off doing like, well, Spike did skateboard stuff, did, but like yeah. a lot of music videos. Yes. So, and then got the OC and then was able to did do... Spike Jones do Her? That is one of the best films going around. I love Her. That is such a good movie. Such a if good If you film, haven't right? seen Her, yeah. Joaquin Phoenix at his best. At his best. He's, Honestly, the best yeah. role he's done and also just the best film. I th- that, that one best film and... Not not too many people have seen it. It came recommended to me by Michael Knight from the Tafe Boys. Yep. When I watched it, I was just in awe of how good that movie is. I saw it in the cinemas in 2013 and I love Phoenix, man. I'll always go see anything, Joaquin. And uh, I, I adored it, man. And it's I think it's a very real idea. It's this... Oh. We're, we're going to fall in love with our, with our AI counterparts in no time at all, man. I already have. <laughs> 
don't get don't, <laughs> don't get Siri talking around here. <laughs> she knows all my secrets. Yeah. So that's enough for shit movie chat. Let's get back on track Alrighty. with some body surf news. So I don't know if you know this, Lockie. It's been a big year. Is for it? the Body Surf Podcast, and it's been a big year for the Budgie Boys. We took out third place at the Australian Body Surfing Classic for 2022, which means we've got nowhere else to go besides down. So, and <laughs> you're retiring, are you? I've retired from team events. Okay. So, I won't be included in that team anymore. Um, they might be able to get me out of retirement if they're real desperate, but they've got people knocking on the door trying to get into that team now because they're, you know, they're a gold medal team. Mm. Who wouldn't want to mm. compete with the Budgie Boys? So I'm going to be taking on more of a coaching role. Awesome. And also focusing more on commentary and media and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. But I'll still compete maybe in an individual event here. And I'm still going to body surf as much as I, I, I can. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah, that, that, that event I'm, I'm no longer going to be a part of, any sort of team event. I'm just going to enjoy the day rather than sort of worry about swimming. Because when you're not one of the big guns, when you're not one of the big boys, you only go in the water twice mm. <laughs> i caught two ways for that the whole day so, really yeah it, 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 it's it's a lot of nerves and a lot of anticipation and a lot of sort well, of hang on a second you're a stand-up comic and you're saying that the nerves and anticipation were too much is that what you're saying well that's the thing i do stand-up comedy every day yeah so i don't get nervous doing it right i don't compete i compete in a body surf comp once a year right. so i'm not used to it yeah and it is nerve-wracking like especially when when you do stand-up comedy, if you bomb, you bomb and you've only got yourself to blame and, you know, you're the only one who's going to be hard on yourself. When you bomb at a body surfing comp, your whole team's going to be let down by you. Yeah. So I don't like having that pressure on me and I think um, it will give some of the younger boys an opportunity to step up and take over. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, that's that's that was big news for us and it's very exciting to sort of go into the new year, 2023, and see what happens, see if we're able to sort of get our when we're obviously not going to get second or first because the teams in there are too good but can we maintain that sort of it would be good to stick around in 5 4 3 so what can you would you mind explaining what makes a good um, body surfing wave like what what's a good judged wave Oh, judged wave. It's it's normally length of ride, length. really. Yeah. yeah, and that seems to be similar to stand up surfing comps. So, yeah, uh, uh, maybe maybe if you're keen to to enter, you know, you can you can put a team together. Nice. There is a north. <laughs> there is a North Shore team. Yeah, I, I'd say there would be. Yeah. Um, so I'm yeah. Surprised. Anyways, yeah, that was very exciting for us, and that really took uh, a lot. Oh, that was pretty much the motif of the second. Uh, half of the year yeah we, we were just talking a lot about the body surfing classic and that we came third so we're heading into summer summer series will start up soon here on the body surf Co- podcast i'll do some silly things here and there but 2023 is going to be big for us Lockie, because i'm living in lane cove now mm. i'm no longer in cronulla which means we might be able to get a different breed of guest here Ooh. on the body surf podcast now you're the first northy that we've had on for a while. Awesome. Um, Belly Slater, one of the greatest body surfers and one of the best commentators in the game lives out here. Um, Jared Bridges, who was meant to be on uh, this year, he lives out here, so we're going to get him on. There's uh, even Rich and Jeremy, who we've already had on, they live out here. So we've got these this crew of North Shore guys that will hopefully be a big part of the Body Surf Podcast. Because good. in previous seasons of the Body Surf Podcast, you've probably noticed there's been a lot of shiries on. Yeah. And these guys are not great guys. <laughs> <laughs> these guys are the bottom of the barrel sort of scum that you don't really want on a podcast but we had to get on because they were locals so Better than nothing now we've got some some classy acts that yeah. we might be able to get on so um i'm in lane cove always on the central coast not sure how that's going to work Owie and i will have to have a chat in the new year and sort all that stuff out cool. but we're going to come back with a bigger and better show we did announce that we've got a bit of a team. So, Wufo is our executive producer. We now have Corey Sainsbury on board as our senior producer. And in the assistant producer role, we have Hamish. So, a nice little team supporting Owe and myself, which is very exciting. And I'm looking forward to 2023 so much. So, I think we've got to get out of here, Lockie. You've, yeah, got, you've got to go, you know... 
get a, a, a quick nine in at the pitch and punch. So, <laughs> so um, do you know the sign off? I know you. And also, I just want to say thank you, Lockie, for being such a big supporter of not only the podcast, but any time I've been jumping on community radio, you've always tuned in. Oh, mate. Any time no, I've pleasure. done stand up, you've, you've supported me so much. Uh, Lockie actually came and p- performed stand up with me <laughs> yeah, once at an open yeah, mic, which 100%. was very fun. You were very, very good. Oh, uh, whatever. You have a. You have a would you call it a photographic memory you just you have a perfect memory you can r- remember your I'm material good, yeah i'm good with mat- i did drama at school so i i'm used to learning lines and and retelling them i got a good way of doing that yeah i wish i had that i honestly make it up as i go or i try and remember a few jokes and just see where it takes awesome. me but um, yeah yeah and that I, still works it can but uh i wish i had a memory like yours because that was very impressive yeah but thank you so much for your support uh all the best in the new year have a you good too, christmas no, uh, my pleasure yeah, my yeah, pleasure thanks, thanks for having me on man. no thank you for coming on it we've, we've been talking about doing this for a while have, so i'm glad yeah. you're able to do it uh, now I know you, you listen to the podcast. I'm just wondering if you've made it to the end of a podcast. Uh, how do we sign it off? Yeah, how so does it officially happen? Yeah, I'll turn off the mics real quick. All right, here we go. And there, uh, have a great Christmas. Have a great New Year's. We'll be back soon with Summer Series, and then we'll be kicking things off for the new season of 2023, which is very exciting. But remember, we got to get out of here. Do it all again real soon. But remember, it's always... I forget what the thing is. It's always overhead. When you're body surfing. (laughs) Bye-bye.